Namaste and welcome to the video course on watershed management. In this module 1 on introduction and basic concepts, in today's lecture, lecture number 3, we will discuss about the watershed management policies. So, some of the important topics covered here include introduction to water policy, legislative framework, institutional framework, watershed policies, formulation, policy issues for successful watershed management, national water policy and a case studies. So, some of the important keywords related to this lecture are water policy, institutional framework, legislative framework and watershed management policy. So, while dealing with uh, any resources like uh, water or land, it is always better to have a well defined policy. So, before going to the various aspects of watershed policy, let us have a look into the uh, various policies related to water issues uh, say persisting in a country or what are the issues which has to be there uh, as far as a water policy is concerned. So, here some of the important aspects of water policies are listed. So, water policy actually it's a, set, it's a set of guidelines and directives to the state of for harnessing water resources to cater the various sectorial needs like agriculture sector, industrial sector and domestic sector. And this gives the need in equitable way that leads to the sustainable development. So, as we have already discussed in the case of uh, watershed management, so we are looking for the sustainable development issues. So, water is also concerned, water is also a resource. So, that way the water policy, the water policy should uh, give sufficient information, sufficient guidelines uh, as far as the various issues of sustainable development are concerned. So, a policy is so actually the water policy is a statement that defines ownership and related rights with regard to its use that means here water then incentive and penalty awards towards conservation and deterioration of water resources then uh, the policy statement should include water allocation priorities to various sectors so as we discussed important sectors are agricultural the industrial and domestic sectors. Then uh, the policy statement should mention about water conservation. Then also the policy statement should uh, mention about the, the institutional structure for executing the planning, implementation and maintenance of the system. So, that way the water policy should be well defined, it should give the various aspects, various regulations which are prevailing or which are supposed to implement as far as that resource is concerned. Then uh, what are the various components of water policy? So, here in these slides the components are listed. So, mainly water policy is concerned two components are there. First one is the legislative framework, second one is the institutional framework. The legislative framework is gives the legal framework that def defines the rights to exploit or use of water resources and provisions of award of incentives and penalties. So, this is say legislative framework gives the legal aspects so the, the rules and regulations as far as the, the policy is concerned. So, either as a water policy or watershed policy or whichever policy we are considering. So, legislative framework gives the various rules and regulations and then uh, uh, say how to implement uh, uh, that rules and regulations. So, all these aspects are given. Uh, as far as the legislative framework is concerned. Then the second framework is the institutional framework. So, institutional framework uh, uh, gives the details of administrative system uh, that is responsible for assessments and management of water resources. So, as far as water policy is concerned, the institutional framework shows the administrative system who administrate uh, various aspects of the uh, water resource on national level, state level or block level or up to the panchayat level. So, then now we will discuss the uh, important aspects as far as legislative and the uh, administrative or the institutional framework is concerned. So, here the various issues uh, related to legislative framework uh, is uh, uh, discussed in this slides. So, as far as India is concerned, uh, water is uh, in Indian constitution is uh, it is it is uh, water is an entry in 56 of uh, union list and entry of 17 of uh, state list. The articles 246 and article 260 
two mentions uh, about the water related issues and it uh, empowers parliament to make law regarding developments uh, and management of interstate rivers. So, as such uh, India is concerned uh, water is a uh, mainly a state issue, uh, the central government or government of India has got uh, advisory rules, but of course, uh, parliament can uh, enact various rules and regulations, so that the various uh, st uh, states uh, has to follow. So, as for this article 262, this article specifies that parliament may by law provide that uh, neither the Supreme Court or any other court shall exercise jud jurisdiction with respect to interstate river disputes. So, uh, so you can see that um, uh, the, uh, the Indian state, India is concerned that there are number of states and uh, then a large uh, number of rivers are passing through various states. Then of course, uh, various disputes will be there between states uh, as far as the uh, water sharing issues uh, are concerned for the particular river is concerned. So, as per article 200. 62. Uh, so, uh, instead of a judicial review of these various issues, uh, uh, always uh, the this article mentions about the uh, arbitration or arbitrate uh, rules as far as the uh, interstate issues are concerned. So, the interpretation as far as this article 262 is um, the Supreme Court or uh, other judicial agencies can um, uh, say um, uh, appoint uh, some arbitrators uh, to deal with this interstate. Uh, rules. So, these details uh, you can see in, in the Ministry of Water Resources uh, website uh, as uh, mentioned here. Then uh, uh, now we will discuss various water legislations uh, as far as India is concerned. So, uh, in, in India as far as water legislation is concerned, uh, the surface water and ground water is uh, uh, are not defined separately. So, it is uh, mentioned uh, as water only. So, various uh, components of water regulations are listed here and then its applicable regulatory framework is also mentioned. As far as ownership of water is concerned, uh, the uh, government of India Act uh, as per 1882 rules, uh, the, uh, the uh, on ownership of the uh, water is, is, is uh, the state governments and um, of course, the government of India's advisory role. And then withdrawal of water is concerned, uh, so it is a state subject. Uh, so, uh, some of the states have enacted uh, and implemented uh, water resource legislation. And then usage of water is concerned um, uh, as per Government of India Act, um, say, um, prevention and control of pollution, uh, various acts have been enacted. Uh, so, uh, then um, uh, as far as um, uh, the various uh, Government of India agencies are concerned, then again uh, uh, advisory roles are there and uh, mainly state government will be uh, dealing with the, the uh, water pollution issues are concerned. Uh, then uh, wastewater disposal also, Government of India Act, um, uh, which is uh, implemented in 1974 and 1998, states uh, various uh, regulations. And then also, uh, the state uh, pollution control boards deal with the wastewater related issues and then uh, uh, water uh, uh, management and then uh, water quality issues are also concerned. Uh, mainly, state has a major say and then Government of India has got um, advisory roles and its agencies can give advices. Of course, uh, important laws can be enacted by uh, the parliament. Then some of the important uh, water legislations in India are listed here. So, some of the legislations related to Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974, which is again um, uh, say um, uh, amended in 1978 and 1988. So, these um, legislations deals with um, setting up of institution related to administration of water like a central pollution control board and state pollution control boards. Then it uh, undertake uh, functions related to prevention and control and maintaining and restoring related to uh, wholesomeness of water. So, water is considered as a uh, whole issue. So, it is not only quantity of water, quality of water is also a major issue. So, um, uh, various uh, uh, legislations as far as uh, water related um, say um, uh, water sharing or uh, water um, uh, resources utilization and then all, of course, the quality of water to be maintained all these uh, number of legislations are available um, uh, 
uh, in India. Uh, and then also the institution provide uh, consent to operate and uh, consent to establish uh, to industries based on applicability. So, um, this is also a state issue, uh, but um, of course, uh, government of India enacts certain laws and regulations so that um, the states can uh, follow uh, as appropriate uh, as far as the various issues are concerned. Then uh, the Environmental and Protection Act of 1986. So, this gives uh, our, and, um, uh, say various uh, um, say re regulations as far as the environmental issues are concerned. So, this um, uh, protection act lays down the procedure for setting up of uh, standards, emissions and discharge of pollutions and accordingly uh, the Bureau of Indian Standards have come up with uh, uh, various um, Indian standards uh, such as uh, 3025 uh, 3, for sampling, then um, um, uh, 2373 for flow measurements, then uh, 10500 for drinking water specifications, uh, then uh, contaminant wise related guidelines for waste water etcetera. So, the uh, to deal with all these issues central pollution control board is there, then uh, also uh, various uh, states pollution control boards are also uh, there to see that uh, these various uh, rules and regulations are uh, implemented uh, appropriately for uh, various issues are concerned. Then uh, as far as water is concerned another important bill is uh, model ground water bill of 1970. So, this uh, bill uh, contains the broad framework of ground water regu regulation of the country. So, uh, due to uh, overdraft of the uh, ground water then ground water levels are going down in many places and also ground water pollution is a major issue. So, this uh, 1970 bill provides the, uh, the states and union territories to establish ground water authority to notify areas of control and regulate the ground water development and management. So, accordingly uh, government of India formed a central uh, ground water authority. Uh, so, according to their norms the uh, say they have categorized the various zones as uh, say safe drinking water zones or over exploited zone or critical uh, polluted zone. So, like that central ground water authority has um, uh, made um, uh, say various um, uh, say, uh, uh, say uh, 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 norms as far as the groundwater is concerned. So, that is about the uh, groundwater bill of uh, 1970. Then uh, this is about the legislative framework as far as the uh, water policy is concerned. So, of course, uh, the watershed when we deal with uh, wa uh, watershed management water policy is very important. So, according to the uh, these water policies the water resources um, uh, management in a particular watershed uh, we will be dealing with. So, that is why these water policies are also important as far as the, the watershed management issues are concerned. Uh, so, uh, so far what we discussed is about the some of the uh, legislation as far as water policy is concerned. Now, uh, the various administrative structures as far as uh, government of India and uh, state governments are concerned. So, some of the major institutions or the administrative structure is concerned um, uh, government of India has got a ministry of water resource and then also many state government also have got this ministry of water resource. So, the government of India ministry of water resource is the nodal agency for planning developments and management of the water resource of the country. So, of course, as I mentioned earlier the uh, state governments have a major say as far as the uh, water resource is concerned, but um, uh, government of India has got an advisory role and then um, uh, say the ministry and then its agencies have an um, advisory role or to they can advise the state government to uh, do the development uh, as far as developmental issues are concerned or as far as the implementation issues are concerned or sustainable development or sustainable uh, water management is are concerned <coughs> they have got the uh, advisory role. And then under Ministry of Water Resources uh, various departments are there uh, like uh, Central Water Commission for um, surface water related issues, then Central Ground Water Board is there for ground water related issues, then National Water Development Agency is there to provide technical support as far as the the uh, Ministry of Water Resources and various state governments are concerned. So, they um, um, develop um, the detailed project report and then come up with uh, various um, uh, issues, uh, they come up with the models and then uh, uh, support system as far as the government of India and its uh, project implementation and then state governments are concerned. 
and then uh, also uh, as uh, the various institutions like um, water and land management institutes in various states and then uh, various agricultural universities and then um, various water related departments uh, in uh, states and um, uh, the union territories are there for uh, research uh, and then developmental issues as far as the uh, water related issues are uh, concerned. So, these are these are the details as far as the administrative structure is concerned. Then also as far as government of India is concerned some other ministries uh, are also dealing with um, some of the water related issues. So, the ministries uh, include are listed here like uh, ministry of rural development. So, this ministry deals with the, the uh, land and then uh, rural area development is concerned. So, some of the pro project or some of the issues which uh, ministry of rural development will be dealing are uh, desert uh, development program, drought prone area program, integrated uh, wasteland development program uh, like that. Uh, and then uh, another other important ministry is ministry of agriculture and cooperation. So, uh, say they deal with the, uh, the uh, various uh, agricultural water management issues, then uh, drinking water program, then wa national watershed development program of government of India. Uh, so, like that uh, various watershed related issues are dealt by uh, ministry of agriculture uh, of say government of India and then of course, um, similarly uh, for various state governments are concerned. So, uh, the various watershed related uh, policies and uh, uh, projects are under the ministry of agriculture like uh, region wise watershed development projects, then integrated watershed development projects etcetera are um, dealt by uh, Ministry of Agriculture. Then another important ministry is Ministry of Environment and Forest. So, Ministry of Environment Forest deals with um, the, the uh, pollution issues of um, uh, water and um, uh, water air and, and soil and related issues. So, uh, under Ministry of uh, Environment and Forest there is Central Pollution Control Board, then uh, National uh, River Conservation Board. Uh, so, they deal with the uh, various water quality issues, then uh, lake development, then um, uh, eco development programs etcetera. So, these are the administrative structures as far as the uh, government of India and then various state governments uh, are concerned uh, uh, as a typical case uh, as far as India is concerned. So, now, uh, so far what we have discussed is about the water policies as far as I mentioned when we discuss about the watershed management issues or watershed policies are concerned, water policies are also very important since most of the uh, issues related to water policies are also applicable as far as watershed management policy is concerned. So, now we will come back to watershed policy and then discuss uh, various issues as far as watershed policy is concerned. So, watershed policy uh, are formulated to manage and protect watershed fully and effectively and a clear policy uh, is always required to emphasize uh, inter area uh, so that the various um, interaction between various um, sectors are concerned so that we can have a coordinated and integrated approach uh, then local participation is possible, uh, manpower and resource management are possible, appropriate land use planning are possible. So, like that um, uh, a, a, a specific policy uh, as a watershed policy is always essential to uh, deal with the, uh, the watershed management uh, effectively. So, then uh, main objective of watershed management as we discussed earlier is to promote integrated um, protection, conservation and development of land and water resource uh, in a watershed so for sustainable use and for the benefit of the nation as a whole. So, that is the main objective of any watershed management program. So, the watershed policy which we can formulate, so that helps uh, to uh, uh, make appropriate uh, uh, plans and uh, uh, management manager plan uh, for the considered watershed. So, uh, the watershed policy uh, uh, are the, uh, the documents that uh, gives the regulations uh, that uh, re regulates both the public uh, and um, uh, private activities within our watersheds primarily through use of codes, uh, ordinances 
uh, through the establishment of minimum or maximum standards and uh, then setting of budgets. So, the watershed policy uh, either uh, under the ministry of um, agriculture or ministry of water resource. Uh, so, uh, say when the watershed policies are formulated and then further modified uh, say as per the various needs. So, that uh, policy paper shows uh, policy uh, gives the details as far as the uh, setting of budgets, then what kind of activities should be put to say for example, uh, if when we consider various 5 year plans. So, say for example, 12th 5 year plan, what should be the, what, what are our targets as far as the various achievements for next 5 years related to watershed and then what are things to be implemented um, and then what kind of support should be given to uh, various states and other agencies from the government of India. So, all these details will be put in the uh, watershed policies. So, uh, as far as the various strategies for implementation of the watershed policies are concerned, uh, various issues are uh, listed here. So, this uh, watershed policy gives the, uh, the, uh, the overall picture of the uh, developmental issues as far as the national watershed program is concerned. Then it uh, established an uh, inter-ministerial watershed uh, ma management committee. So, you, as I mentioned, various ministries uh, are coming to picture as far as the watershed management um, uh, implementation uh, are concerned or the policy developments are concerned. So, uh, the uh, various ministries or various agencies should come together to uh, make an appropriate watershed policy document. Then, uh, the, uh, it should strengthen human and financial resources required to coordinate, implement and uh, monitor uh, work in the uh, various watershed related uh, uh, projects. Then also the uh, watershed policy uh, rank each watershed and uh, establish uh, priorities for interventions. So, we have already seen uh, various watershed related issues are there, problems are there. Uh, so, that um, when we look for a uh, holistic way of watershed management um, uh, practice or watershed management plans, um, say we should rank what is the, uh, the priorities and then accordingly, uh, so the watershed policy will give uh, the ranking for the uh, according to the priorities. And then also the uh, watershed policy secure budgetary support for implementation of the policy. So, once a policy document is made, uh, so the budget will be allocated and then uh, the implementation issues also uh, will be uh, discussed. So, accordingly we can develop a watershed uh, uh, policy. So, that, that gives the various uh, framework as far as the watershed management plans are concerned. So, here the watershed development policy issues are listed further. So, uh, the regulations or policies generated towards uh, one aspect of watershed management should not be contradictory, contradictory to the other aspect. So, as I mentioned uh, various ministries, various agencies uh, are dealing with uh, water related issues or watershed related issues. So, um, uh, the um, uh, regulations or policies uh, generated by one agency or one ministry should not be contradictory to the uh, whatever uh, put by other agencies. So, that way uh, we should be careful. Then watershed development is prerequisite for land, uh, water and biomass management. So, when we develop a watershed development policy, we have to see that the, uh, the, the watershed development is the prerequisite for uh, land, water and biomass management. Then watershed development policy formulation should be consistent with the uh, federal, state and uh, local legislation. So, the federal government or the government of India say for example, will be having e its norms and policy. So, uh, say when the uh, watershed uh, de development policy is formulated, then we have to see the various needs, uh, various um, geographical conditions, various um, um, uh, policy, existing policies uh, ex uh, in a local, state uh, uh, and regional level. So, that uh, say there will not be any conflicts and then some mutual cooperation will be uh, possible. 
then further overall policy formulation should be done uh, by considering a larger interest of the country. So, even the various um, uh, issues will be there on regional level or state level, but uh, whenever um, a final policy formulation is done, uh, the, the uh, main emphasis should be overall uh, policy formulation uh, should be for the larger interest of the country. So, that uh, we should be careful when we, the appropriate watershed policies. Uh, for policies are formulated. Now, let us see some of the important characteristic, characteristics as far as watershed policies are should stand as ready uh, uh, guides to answering uh, many questions that may arise in the implementation of watershed management plans. So, when we are developing a watershed management plan and then going for implementation, so the policy document should uh, clearly tell the, uh, the various questions, various issues as far as the, the implementation agencies are concerned and generally watershed policies are formulated at the government level by considering the various issues. Uh, by discussing with um, various uh, agencies including uh, non-government organization, NGOs, then uh, local people, etcetera. So, at government level, uh, the watershed policies say it will be following uh, say the decision and actions and then uh, we will be checking the, the, the importance of each decision and then related um, uh, if once it is implemented what will be happening and then uh, what will be the ramifications as far as the, the various policy issues are concerned. And then uh, the time frame whenever this policy will be implemented then what will be happening uh, for the uh, that particular policy and then what will be its ramifications. So, that also we have to uh, discuss whenever we formulate a watershed uh, policy and then uh, uh, the, the various issues uh, concerned to that uh, particular watershed policy. So, now uh, the various issues uh, when, we disc when we formulate a watershed policies, uh, the wa watershed policies are discussed here. So, watershed policy formulation is uh, very data intensive. So, as I mentioned say the watershed uh, when we go prepare watershed management plans. So, it depends upon uh, various issues like uh, the particular watershed characteristics, then various needs of the society or various needs of the particular area is concerned and then um, uh, the, the climatic, climatic issues or hydrological issues. So, uh, say when we are formulating particular watershed policy, uh, so we have to see that um, uh, say all these issues are addressed properly. Then of course, from one location to another location, the, the uh, uh, various uh, characteristics, various issues will be uh, varying, but of course, to uh, come up with a watershed policy, we should uh, we can classify the various issues according to the needs according to its characteristics and then we can collect the appropriate data and then analyze it and then uh, go for the formulation of the watershed policy. So, the, uh, the data like hydrological information watershed is uh, we have to get and that is uh, very expensive, uh, expensive to obtain and interpret. And then um, some of the basic uh, sets of data like um, inventory of watershed resources, then inventory of uh, use of resources, then the um, socio economics of the people. So, like that um, various issues we have to uh, deal with uh, when we uh, formulate the watershed policy. So, as far as um, various uh, data is concerned, um, the collection of information like um, uh, we can follow the, uh, the various aspects listed here. So, like um, right of access to information, so this should um, uh, be readily available. So, ma mainly as we discussed uh, mo most of this um, implementation aspects or the various issues are concerned, it is state wide subject. So, the state government can make policies or formulate uh, the uh, objectives and then collect the appropriate data. Then uh, various information requirements uh, such as um, uh, the, the uh, uh, say technical technological details or the, the land details or the water related details. So, this need a um, um, large amount of time and then uh, it is a huge task. So, uh, say we, we have to see that um, since uh, uh, say the watershed characteristics or watershed plans will be varying depending upon the area. So, we have to see that the uh, data requirements 
should be minimum and then we have to collect the data in an optimal way. So, that we can uh, go for the uh, uh, best policy documentation uh, for the particular watershed management issues are concerned. So, now uh, let us discuss uh, what are the important policy issues uh, as far as the uh, uh, say development of a successful watershed management policy is concerned. So, some of the important policy issues are listed here uh, like uh, understanding and quantifying the biomass types and interactions uh, both uh, in space and time. So, um, as you can see that um, the various resources like water, the land use etcetera all these things will be varying with respect to space and time. So, we have to understand and quantify these biomass types. Then uh, there should be proper linkage between social, political and technical system at appropriate levels. So, that is uh, very important um, for the successful uh, development of uh, policy. Then agroecological approach uh, should be considered for planning of watershed. So, most of the time the, the agricultural um, um, practices or uh, uh, the ecological uh, aspects are very important. So, that issues uh, we have to consider. Then uh, the priority should be given to water resource development in watershed. So, as uh, we discussed water is one of the important resource as far as the, the uh, domestic industrial or agricultural practice are concerned. So, the priority should be to uh, given to water resource development in the area. Then uh, requirement of um, the poor people and influences on the watershed. So, all these should come uh, in uh, policy formulation so that um, there will be uh, appropriate um, uh, uh, say uh, socio-economic uh, aspects will be uh, incorporated within the uh, watershed uh, policy. So, then uh, some more issues are listed here like um, need to establish and manage a um, national database system for the watershed. So, so when we develop the policy issues, we have to see these issues. Then the watershed models uh, should be properly formulated, verified and confirmed uh, with uh, field observations. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, this uh, po watershed policies, when it when these policies are formulated, we have to see that uh, what is really happening within the field uh, or within the various watershed and then uh, we have to see, we have to confirm uh, uh, with respect to field observations uh, whether the, uh, the policies which we are formulating are viable and whether it can be implemented and then that can be sustained. Then uh, most of the watershed policies are concerned um, agriculture is uh, so you can see that uh, one of the important um, uh, sector. So, this agriculture is highly dependent on soils and climate. So, um, most of the um, uh, areas say for example, in India the, the, the farmers are dependent upon rain fed agriculture. So, the climate uh, conditions are very important. So, for example, uh, based on 50 years of climate data and then up to date soil database. Uh, say um, uh, India is divided into 20 agroecological -eco zones AEZ. So, uh, we can classify uh, depending upon the uh, soil uh, 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 related data then climatic conditions. So, um, like uh, we can have um, uh, agroecological zones. So, uh, when we are formulating the watershed policy, so maybe uh, for each zone we can have um, uh, different type of uh, policies depending upon the, the ecological conditions, depending upon the climatic conditions, depending upon soil nature, etcetera. So, each uh, uh, agroecological zone is, is uh, we can consider as a uh, uniform uh, zone and then uh, it is possible in terms of uh, physiography, climate, length of uh, growing period, uh, soil type uh, and then uh, for uh, macro level land use planning and effective uh, transfer technology. So, this kinds of agroecological zone, zoning is uh, very good. So, uh, say uh, the ministry of water resources uh, um, has done this um, agroecological zoning as far as um, India is concerned. So, accordingly 20 zones give say the various issues or say according to the various characteristics. So, the zoning is done. So, each zone uh, we can have a separate watershed policy. So, accordingly uh, they say we can formulate the, uh, the policy. Then uh, also we have to see the collaboration of uh, various organizations uh, coming to uh, 
say as far as the watershed policy is concerned. Um, so, as we have seen uh, various ministries uh, how to interact and then uh, uh, to see that um, uh, say successful policies are formulated. So, like for example, in India Ministry of Agriculture and Ministry of Water Resources de deals with uh, uh, watershed uh, development uh, policies are concerned. So, uh, they have to um, collaborate uh, the ministries, various agencies have to collaborate so that um, uh, appropriate policies are developed. And then there should be proper institutional setup uh, with uh, people's initiative and involvement. So, we have seen uh, in earlier, earlier lectures for the successful implementation of any watershed uh, development plans, uh, people participation is very important, stakeholders should have a good say in starting from the development plans to implementation and to its maintenance. So, that way people's initiate, initiative is very important, people's involvement is very important. So, that way uh, proper institutional uh, framework should be set up when we uh, develop a watershed uh, uh, policy. Then also continuous monitoring of the physical progress of the watershed project should be done uh, as a uh, policy formulation. And then also you can see that um, nowadays uh, various uh, modern techniques like uh, remote sensing can be effectively used, um, geographic information system can be effectively used. So, all these um, uh, modern techniques uh, tool, modern technical tools give um, uh, the capability for uh, uh, say successful policy formulation. So, since um, this um, the say for example, remote sensing um, uh, data for um, uh, say for India for uh, at various seasons. So, that gives what kind of um, uh, say land use planning is there, what, what kind of things are going um, uh, in the past. So, accordingly uh, various policy formulations uh, will be possible. And then also the geography information systems give a um, lot of flexibility as far as the uh, watershed based planning and management is concerned. So, that way uh, we can uh, have um, uh, better uh, policy can be developed say as far as watershed policies are concerned. So, now, uh, so far we have seen uh, the various issues, um, various characteristics and then how we can develop a successful watershed policy. So, then what will be the outcome of a successful watershed policy? So, as we have um, discussed earlier, so any uh, successful watershed policy uh, gives uh, overall uh, development and overall upliftment of the society or upliftment of the people. Uh, so, the various issues as far as watershed scale is concerned. So, you can see that um, the, uh, the uh, various issues uh, or uh, for a successful outcome of a successful uh, watershed policy uh, the, it is mentioned here in a uh, block diagram. So, here you can see that um, the natural resource and human resource we are effectively utilizing on a watershed uh, scale. So, various village institutions and community participations will be taking place. And then accordingly in the policy formulation we should have uh, uh, various norms for capacity building, then uh, financial support and then is extensions like um, say for example, water harvesting, lift irrigation, then water and soil conservation, uh, afforestation activities, joint forest management, community support systems then infrastructure and energy services. So, like that um, various sectors um, we should uh, have appropriate policies um, in, in a successful watershed policy. And uh, then uh, uh, finally, so all these um, uh, good policies will lead to better employment, better development and then finally, the outcome will be improved quality of life as far as the uh, people of particular area is concerned. So, a successful watershed policy uh, gives overall uh, development, overall improvement in the socioeconomics of the people and then of course, uh, sustainable development as far as the, the, uh, the uh, so watershed is concerned or the, the uh, flora and fauna of the uh, particular area is concerned. So, this block, block diagram shows the, what will be the outcome as far as the uh, as far as a successful watershed uh, policy is concerned. So, now in India various watershed policies or wa watershed plans um, um, uh, government of India and various state governments are implementing for last um, 40 to 50 years. So, uh, uh, here uh, we say if you look into the various um, policies development or various um, uh, watershed development plans formulated by government of India and other state governments from 1970 onwards, we can see that um, 
uh, say how the the variation is taking place, how the trend is changing. Say for example, in 1970s the uh, the main emphasis was on the uh, water conservation. So, like uh, development of large uh, dams, reservoirs and then uh, say soil erosion issues or uh, water management issues. So, that is mainly the, the policy was formulated in such a way that the uh, government will be implementing uh, various projects and then uh, the, uh, the either central government or state governments will be uh, the formulating the projects and its agencies will be implementing. So, there are no say by uh, there were no say by the people or um, the people were not participating effectively in, uh, in, in uh, none of these projects. So, that were the, the way of watershed development policies in 1970s uh, till 80s and then uh, the success rate was not so good since many of these uh, projects implemented by vari various agencies could not sustain due to the lack of people participations, people understanding or people um, uh, um, uh, say will to participate in the project. So, that um, uh, the, the maintenance uh, and uh, uh, the further keeping up of the project were possible. Then uh, by understanding these mistakes, the various agencies uh, of government of India and state governments changed their policies. So, in 1980s, the importance as far as watershed development is concerned, it was on socio-economic aspects uh, with uh, water conservation. So, here uh, various watershed development projects were implemented um, uh, throughout the country uh, through the state governments. So, there the emphasis one was on the water conservation as well as socio-economic development of the people. So, there again the uh, 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 say stakeholders or the people were not coming to picture, they were not actively participated uh, in this project. So, further in 1990s there was a trend change there the not only the socio-economic aspects, but um, water conservation and then some for the as far as the implementation is concerned uh, people participation also um, or the stakeholders participation also were considered in 1990s and then you can see the success rate was increasing in many of these projects. And finally, say uh, by uh, looking to uh, the various successful projects like uh, Raligan Siddhi in Maharashtra or Jabo watershed in Madhya Pradesh. So, then the, there were uh, a shift in the policy formulations or watershed policy formulation as far as the government of India or state government agencies, agencies are concerned. So, now the latest trend is there are public involvement, public participation from the planning stage, then design stage and then also implementation stage is concerned. So, then you can see that um, many of the recent projects what were implemented by various agencies um, uh, were very, so when once these projects were evaluated you can see that many of these projects are uh, successful. So, mainly you can see that the reason is that uh, people participation and then uh, uh, people were actively involved from the, uh, the planning stage stage to uh, the implementation design uh, and then of course, its maintenance is concerned. So, now uh, with this perspective, so here uh, again we will come back to the water policies as far as what, what we are doing uh, in India is concerned. So, some of the needs of national water policy say for example, in India is concerned. So, some of the needs are listed here. So, availability of water is highly uneven in both space and time. So, you can see that um, India is concerned mainly water is uh, obtained through monsoon rainfall say starting from June to uh, say either September or October. So, the precipitation is confined to only few months in a year and rainfall varies specially. Say for example, in western Raj parts of Rajasthan the rainfall is about 100 mm, but um, this goes to 10,000 mm in uh, some parts of uh, Meghalaya region. And then uh, on an average um, say there is number of uh, problems like uh, floods and droughts. So, flood affects around 7.5 million hectares uh, per year as far as India is concerned. Then planning and implementation of water resource projects involve a number of socio-economic aspects uh, and issues. Uh, then uh, uh, of course, say uh, the need is for environmental sustainability, sustainability issues. Uh, then uh, rehabilitation of project affected people and livestock. So, whenever huge projects are uh, coming up, then uh, say environmental issues are major issues. Then also rehabilitation of the people are concerned that is also major issues to be considered. Then common approaches and guidelines are necessary on these matters. Then gross irrigation potential is estimated to have increased uh, from 
19.5 million uh, to 95 million hectares by the year 1999 or 2000. So, uh, whenever a, a national water policy, policy is formulated, there should be we have to see the water quality issues uh, also. So, uh, say accordingly, a national water policy has been formulated in India. So, this policy has been first adopted in 1987 and then uh, formulated uh, in 2002. So, this national water policy advocates water resource of the country uh, should be brought within the category of utilizable resource to the maximum possible extent. So, there are uh, various uh, sector sectorial needs like agriculture sector, then uh, industrial sector or domestic sector all these uh, needs to be considered uh, to the maximum possible extent. So, that is that where some of the important uh, uh, aspects as far as the national water policy is concerned. Then uh, some of the salient features are listed here like this national water policy promotes use of non-conventional methods such as traditional water harvesting, then ro rooftop rainwater harvesting, etcetera. Uh, then uh, uh, so, this uh, water harvesting is mainly possible will be done on a watershed scale. Then water transfer to uh, water scarce region. So, uh, there uh, in this uh, water policy the transfer like inter basin transfer from one basin to another basin. So, that were also uh, formulated in the national water policy uh, that was formulated in 2002. Then uh, people participation has been given uh, very uh, much importance as far as the water policy is concerned. And then also uh, uh, public private partnership like uh, PPP. So, that was also given emphasis in this uh, water policy of 2002. Then water resource planning uh, at hydrological unit, not on polit political unit. Like uh, it is not a uh, say vill village level or the uh, say block level or district level, but uh, as we discussed, it should be a scientific level, like a watershed scale or a hydrological unit should be considered. So that uh, that was one of the important aspects of the uh, aspect of this national water policy, which was formulated in two thousand two. So, then also this national water policy direct uh, the states to devise its own water policy uh, in practice. Uh, uh, so, uh, as we discussed various states have um, developed this policies. So, in the national water policy the, uh, the allocation priorities were listed like a uh, national level uh, mainly what should be the allocation uh, priority. So, as far as national level is concerned first priority should be drinking water, then irrigation, hydropower, then ecology, then agro industries, then uh, non agriculture industries, then uh, navigation, so etcetera. So, these are uh, some of the priorities listed by uh, listed in the national water policy, but then of course, as per the needs of the uh, various states. So, this can vary say, say for example, most of the states follow this allocation priority, but uh, some state like uh, Maharashtra, uh, they are the, uh, the main uh, uh, priorities like uh, say first industrial use, then uh, other uses. So, like that. So, this way uh, the uh, priorities may change from uh, one state to another state. So, then uh, like that uh, as I mentioned the national water policy in India, this, uh, this the policy emphasize on need for efficient pricing system and trans, uh, transparent subsidy, subsidy structure uh, for the disadvantaged and poor. So, um, so, that is also listed in the national water policy. Then transfer the water management to user groups and uh, local bodies. So, uh, nowadays the uh, user groups uh, are promoted uh, in uh, various sectors like uh, agricultural water use or industrial water use. So, accordingly uh, the um, transfer uh, of the water management can be done to uh, by using the user group. Then private sector participation in water sector, so that is also emphasized in this national water policy. Then undertaking um, uh, say phased uh, program for improve improvement of water quality based on polluter pay principle. So, you can see that in India water is concerned pollution is a major issue. So, uh, also in this national water policy polluter pay principle has been formulated. Then the need based economic activities on uh, water zoning uh, has been formulated in the national water policy. Uh, then uh, prioritizing the need for uh, of drought prone area. So, uh, as per the, 
the uh, the climatic conditions and the drought prone areas were um, categorized and then uh, the priority should be given uh, say for the uh, drought prone areas so these are some of the salient features of the national water policies of uh, government of india so like this um, the water policies or watershed policies concerned um, uh, say depending upon the various needs depending upon the uh, various um, uh, issues uh, we can develop the particular water policy or watershed policy. So, the water policy gives the guidelines further for the watershed development plans or watershed development policies. So, before uh, closing this lecture, let us have a brief uh, look into two case studies. So, first case studies um, some of the uh, regulations and policies as far as the watershed management in USA is concerned. So, here uh, say the uh, USA uh, the water regulations are concerned uh, the emphasis on clean water act of federal government. So, for evaluating federal water pollution control act. Uh, so, this was uh, amended in 1977 and further revised in various years like in 1981 to 87 like that. So, the objective is to restore and maintain uh, the chemical, physical uh, and biological integration of the nation's water. So, that is as far as the uh, USA Water Regulation Act is concerned. So, as a part of um, Clean Water Act, the Environmental Protection Agency delegates these responsibilities to states. Uh, then uh, the Clean Water Act, Act uh, is the uh, cornerstone of surface water quality protection in United States. So, this uh, uh, Clean Water Act will be uh, are followed by various states also. Then some of the salient features of this regulation uh, include the involvement of stakeholder groups in the development and implementation of the strategies. Then uh, for achieving and maintaining state water quality is um, another hallmark of uh, this approach as far as Clean Water Act is concerned. Under the CWA Environmental Protection Agency has implemented uh, pollution control programs such as setting of waste water standards for industry uh, and then uh, local domestic uh, sewage uh, plants etcetera. Then uh, water quality standards for all contaminants uh, in including surface water and ground water are uh, listed. Then uh, the, the national pollutant and uh, discharge elimination system has been implemented. Uh, in uh, uh, under this um, uh, clean water act so this npdes uh, controls water pollution uh, by regulating point sources that discharge pollutants into the waters so here various uh, timelines and amendments are uh, listed for various years so like in 1972 uh, say the goal was to prohibit the discharge of any pollutant to the waters of uh, uh, at various locations then national pollutant discharge elimination system has been developed. Then the process was extremely successful uh, in various uh, uh, areas and then uh, these implementations and then maintenance were looked after by the environmental uh, protection agency US EPA. And then uh, various timelines like 1987 the, uh, the modifications or amendments were done for uh, like non point source of pollution are concerned. Then uh, 1992 uh, Environment Protection Ag Agency published a notice requesting information and public comments uh, for preparing regulations under Clean Water Act. Then 1995 EPA proclaimed a for formally a final rule. Um, so, there under this NPDES um, the uh, various amendments were done. Uh, so, that um, further uh, say uh, the implementations were made strict. And further in 1996 national water quality inventory um, were implemented, 1998 EPA national water quality inventory report was um, proposed uh, formulated. Then 1999 the goal was set to setting of establishing total maximum daily loads as far as uh, TMDL is concerned, TMD, TMLDS is concerned. Uh, so, this uh, TMDL specifies the amount of each particular pollutant that may be present in water body. So, like that, so this um, the, the uh, Clean Water Act proposed um, in USA and then implemented by uh, US EPA has been very successful in um, uh, preventing the 
the uh, water pollution uh, at various locations and this uh, policy, the water policy or water pollution uh, prevention policy has been implemented by various states effectively and now you can see that whenever the, the, the uh, evaluations were done uh, last few years, then you can see that these policies were uh, very, very successful. And then as a second case, another uh, uh, case is about river interlinking project of uh, government of India which was proposed in 2003 and 4. And the rationale was large uh, spatial and temporal distribution of rainfall patterns causing drought and floods like is condition in India. So, this gives birth to policy concept of uh, river interlinking projects. So, that means connecting uh, wherever the surplus uh, area, water, water areas to other scarce areas through interlinking of various river basins. So, various river basins are listed here. So, the, actually this was still and this is this proposal is still under proposal stage and the national water development agencies may preparing various um, DPRs um, development project reports. So, the policy impact uh, say here say some of the links are mentioned here. So, there is a, a peninsula link and then there is a, a northern link connecting the various major um, river basins to the northern rivers to the southern peninsula region. So, but you can see that such a policy has lot of uh, impacts as far as the various issues are concerned. Actually, the positive impacts like this may enhance food grain production and then uh, water availability, but then of course, lot of problems will be there like environmental issues, then uh, displacemental issues of the people, then uh, sustainability issues. So, some of the positive impact uh, and then negative impacts, uh, this all these details have been studied by National Water Development Agency for the last few years and then actually recently one or two links like in uh, um, uh, but uh, um, link. Uh, the implementation process are going on, but uh, remaining uh, links are concerned still uh, uh, studies are going on. So, uh, these are some of the uh, relevant references as far as today's lecture is concerned on watershed uh, development and policies. So, some of the tutorial questions like uh, discuss the needs of water policy and components of an effective water policy. Uh, so, these details we have already seen in the lecture then describe the outcome of a successful watershed management policy. So, we have already seen as far as um, uh, the, the development of a successful policy details we have already seen. Then discuss the national water policy in India. We have seen various steps, various issues as far as uh, government of India national water policy is concerned. Then some of the two evaluation self evaluation questions are listed here. What are the important policy issues for successful watershed uh, management? And second question is discuss water related institutions like uh, um, then its roles administrative structures uh, uh, in India. So, this uh, uh, say issues are also discussed in today's lecture. Then uh, few assignment questions like um, illustrate various uh, water legislations in India and its impacts, then how to formulate an effective watershed policy then discuss about the necessity of an effective watershed policy for better watershed management practice practices. So, these issues are also uh, say you can make it as an assignment few questions are listed here, but many of these issues we have discussed in today's lecture. So, as an unsolved problem uh, one uh, case study you may develop uh, as a case study of watershed policy of a country by considering physical setting, watershed conditions then uh, the various problems, history of watershed management, uh, international trends, then legislative framework, institutional framework, challenges, strategies for policy implementation, uh, financial aspects, uh, implementation issues, etcetera. So, you can st various case studies are available in the internet. Say for example, you can see a case study for Jamaica in this website. So, you can develop a case study by considering uh, various issues. So, today we have discussed the uh, watershed development policy, then its formulation and then um, uh, of course, water policy is also an important issue. So, various aspects of water, water policies are also uh, discussed in today's lecture. So, with this the first module on uh, introduction and um, uh, watershed concepts uh, uh, three lectures are over. So, uh, you can see the various um, uh, uh, questions uh, as listed in the self evaluation, tutorial assignments and then unsolved problems uh, for the three lectures 
you, you would have seen in the video. So, now we will be going to module 2 in the next lecture. Thank you very much.